Aspire, as always, we make sure we get you the biggest faces from the world of fashion. This week is no different. Call her a veteran, call her the founder of India's fashion story, or then the woman who gave birth to the boutique culture. She has many firsts up her fashion slate. In 40 years, Ritu Kumar has earned herself the title of being the queen of the Indian fashion industry. Decade after decade, Ritu Kumar participates in fashion shows that allow her to gauge what the evolving Indian woman wants from a Ritu Kumar label. Winner of the Padma Shri and perhaps one of the very few Indian fashion designers who enjoys success abroad, Ritu Kumar is a brand to reckon with. She begins by decoding India's obsession with wedding fashion and its evolution over the years. Before uh, there was any retailing in India, the only, only expenditure that the family made on clothes was for weddings True. and for Diwalis and for rites of passages. So that in essence has not changed. Your real big time spending remains weddings and this has been going on for centuries. It's not something that has suddenly come in because you have a luxury market perceived by the media. Like you mentioned, spoiled for choice. So many brands in the affordable luxury space, so many more in the super luxury space. You have them all at your disposal. How is that changing the scenario? Well, as far as the weddings are concerned, I don't think it has made too much difference getting brands from outside the country, except that now you have the choices of having the luxury to pick up some handbags and shoes. But essentially, your wedding uh, market was I'll buy 51 saris for this wedding distributed to 51 relatives 101 for my daughter's trousseau which she will keep now that 101 and 51 is being dispersed across the various designers in this country but essentially the way an Indian family approaches a wedding I don't think has gone through too much change. Where it is, is the shift is where it used to go, was to the craft areas, to handloom saris. Uh, from there is coming to the ready-made uh, space and enter the designer. They will also give you the uh, time and the luxury to try on something, customize it for you. In essence, it hasn't changed. The shift is that it has gone into malls, it has gone into designer space. You have your Hermeses of the world who are creating those standalone stores because there is a profile, there is a statement to make uh, by staying out of the malls. Uh, that entire culture, how is that? affecting the fashion industry and how do you see it evolve from here? We are sitting in a country where which has defied almost every rule there is that a luxury market has put out there. Uh, we are perhaps the only country in the world which is not uniformly following a Eurocentric uh, fashion handwriting. I think it has happened to China, to Mexico, regardless of what your climate is, what your religion is, whether it's Japan or in South Africa. Everybody is actually wearing what is dictated by Paris, uh, Milan, New York. And everybody keeps asking me this. Why is it that there is such a continuation of clothing patterns in this country, so much so that in 40 years we've evolved our own, which defies definition. I mean, I don't think uh, the brands that come in can any way try and even touch your luxury segment for clothing for women because they're not geared towards it. When you talk about wearing fashion, there is a certain approach that most fashion designers have done in the past. So when you talk about entering a store and trying to find something that's really different, something that really stands out and makes a statement because individuality is also at the heart of fashion today and what your new client is looking for, perhaps a younger client is looking for that as well, perhaps an enmeshing of the old and the new. So are Indian fashion designers like yourself going to be able to live up to that, um, you know, that desire? Nobody is something to everybody. You begin to find your niches. 
and your strong points and that niche customer will come to the person who they have a feel for their clothes there are younger designers who only do western clothes they are you know you have people like rohit gandhi and uh, rahul there is a certain look feel of their clothes which is not anything to do with with what we do maybe we have totally different customers you made a shift yourself ritu from the collection that we've seen uh, it's not something that i'm used to seeing because i see prints on black i'm seeing strong colors most of the time but now i'm seeing the beiges and the whites and i'm seeing outfits that are not necessarily for wedding so are you changing your stance understanding the audience and perhaps your son who is part of the business is helping you make those kind of changes when i was very fortunate that i have actually almost the last 30 years been working on four collections a year for europe all the time and they had done nothing to do with india except that they came out of india and there may have been some sort of element and this was our prep line now there came a time when there was a time when it just did not apply to the indian market at all so what you saw in the indian market from what i did was really basically more bridal stuff more for the older ladies would go out to lunch or coffee etc slowly slowly as the younger generation started coming in the applicability of what i was doing for europe started making much more sense for the indian market i see so now we are doing so again we are finding that for an indian designer what you're doing in europe dictating how you're going to treat not, your indian clientele no that is it not at all that is exactly the crux of the thing what the indian clientele is wanting is a modern silhouette right. she doesn't any more want to wear sarees when she goes to work she perhaps wants to wear a dress but it is not necessarily that she wants to wear a little black number what you as a designer have to do is blend <laughs> and then come up with something which is both climate specific society specific and color specific for this country right and uh, i don't think i can sell 20 black dresses to the same customer in india you can in france because mm -hmm. that's all they wear right. but in india they don't so uh, that's where the label line came in where which was a blend between what we do with the crafts and the colors with very modern silhouettes from all over the world your brand that has taken it uh, from india to other western uh, countries as well so what has it taken what have you done so differently that you've been able to cross that barrier where many haven't been able to it i think what worked was that i have had almost 40 years of experience of dealing in a hugely competitive international market and trying to do four collections a year which would cut it so the understanding of what makes it happen and price points also is important so with that experience they when the time came with amrish my son who wanted to do a label line a younger line he wanted to do far more prep he did not want to remain in the wedding market and he doesn't want to do personalized stuff at all right there was an immediate connect i knew what to do right and then we started that line which is really seeing amazing growth right ritu kumar many thanks for joining us and sharing your perspectives here on aspire thank you